Welcome to Your Voice Must Be Heard. This is a podcast where we share stories strategically to spark encouragement for our listeners, our audience, to elevate their mindset and their thinking, and to enrich their lives, all by the power of divine wisdom. Today, we are discussing the undeniable power of discipline. You know, when you see discipline in action, when you see it among a person's life, you can look at them and say, oh, yeah, she's disciplined or he's disciplined or you hear them say something. You say, oh, yeah, that person is disciplined. My guest epitomizes the definition of discipline or self-control, which I like to define as the ability to be led or trained to do an act consistently or habitually without fail. I'd like to welcome my friend and dear sister eternally, Renee Clark. Welcome, Renee. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to give the guest just a little introduction of who you are. You are a lovely wife, a mother to two beautiful daughters. You have a successful career in healthcare IT, and you are a marathon runner. This is incredible. I'd like to add a few other things. I think that you are also a fashion icon. And then I believe you are a secret princess from your country, Haiti, that you've never mentioned. I mean, you just walk in this level of royalty that I think you are keeping on under the wraps. <laughs> Thank you so much. What a nice intro and so nice of you. Uh, thank yes. you. Yes, yes. You know, when I look at your life, you know, and how you do life, you know, it's so effortless. Your style, grace, faith, strength, resilience, your spiritual walk is very enticing. Your light really elevates me to do better. And I want to share that with the guests. So we're going to jump right in. I believe that one of the ways that you make this all possible is your level of discipline. As people of God and as women of God, we are called to walk in a great level of discipline. In the scriptures, it says, particularly this one scripture that stuck out to me when I was thinking about discipline is, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasure or pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I want you to talk to us a little bit about discipline. What is discipline to you? Walk me through that process in your mind when there is some area in your life that you need to train. Yeah, so discipline to me is doing what you know you need to do, even though you don't feel like it. Because mm. there are plenty of time, whether for me it's running, whether it's reading, reading the word, whether it is getting up to pray, getting up early. So there are a lot of things in life that we naturally don't want to do. We know it's the right thing to do. <laughs> we know that. Yeah. But um, for me, I tend to schedule things. Um, even as a runner, my runs, when that alarm clock goes up, goes on, um, turns on, you have a decision to make. Or you're going to get up and do what you know you need to do or you're not. So this is where you're going to kind of show yourself how disciplined you are because there are a lot of time where that alarm goes off and I'm like, oh, another hour. I don't want to get up. But that's, <laughs> that's when you have to make that decision. We set up the alarm clock for a reason. We have things we need to do. We have things that we schedule and we schedule it for a reason. And we just, we just need to go with it. And a lot of time for me, the initial response, you drag in, you don't want to do it. Once you get started, whether it's reading, whether it's praying, whether it's running, once you get started, what exactly you needed, whether it's the mindset or the body, you actually get it. So normally for me, once I get mm -hmm. started, the initial first few minutes is, is the fight. And then once I get started, then I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm glad I did it. I followed through on what I said I was going to do. So, I mean, that sounds good. You know, it really does. I mean, for for others, it's just so hard to do. Why do you think that is? Like for me, so sometimes I think it's good to know like your weaknesses and then put things in place to help you overcome those. For mm -hmm. me, I would say a couple of things I use. So obviously setting up the alarm clock, 
um, having a, an accountability partner. So when I set a run and I have two or three people that are going to show up, when that alarm clock goes off, I can't just suddenly decide I'm not going to go. Like I have people waiting mm. on me. Mm -hmm. So that helps me push through to show up because I know there are people that are depending on me. Mm. Um, the other thing I would say for me is set goals. Cause a lot of time we say, Oh, I want to do this. I want to do this, especially with the new year coming on you hear a lot. Oh, I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to do so. You can choose to make today be your day one, or you can keep saying one day, I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to travel one day. I'm going to do that one day never comes. Mm -hmm. So with goal setting today, three months from now, I want to do X, Y, Z. So you put it in the calendar, sometimes even telling people help to keep you accountable because you said you were going to do this. So for me, I would say is um, just having other people there to keep me accountable and setting goals with what it is that I want to do. Because if you are not disciplined and doing the actions that you need to take to accomplish those goals, you, you're just not never going to get there. That is truth. I think something I have a problem with is that accountability piece. You know, I, I just don't want to be reminded of something that I just don't want to be committed to. And I, I think that scripture we was just referencing earlier, it, it it's so painful to me. I can't see the pleasure or the um the pleasantness of it on the other side. And so do you feel motivated by the fruit that comes from being disciplined as well? I think the fruit and then just to go back to one thing you said, I think being around like-minded people, just like the word going to church or hanging around people that you know believe the same thing you believe. So if I'm running with a group of people that I know this is serious for them, Mm. that uh, they're going to lift me up. They're going to say, you're doing good. Keep going. So, you know, being around people that are like-minded. So having an accountability, accountability partner that has similar goals, similar views, that knows what you're going through, that knows what it's like to push you through. But, you know, you can't, it's not just hanging around or kind of just being with anybody. It, it, it You have to align yourself with people um, that have the same mind, values, same goals, so that where you weak, they can um, bring you up and strengthen you up, and you can do the same for them. So yes, it is the result, but I think being around like-minded people also helps uh, because they understand. So they mm -hmm. normally they know exactly the right thing to say at that moment to bring mm -hmm. you up because they mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they've been there themselves. Mm -hmm. So tell me, where does this come from? Were you naturally just gifted to be disciplined? Tell us a little bit about how you came to be this way, or is this just who Renee is <laughs> from um, the beginning? <laughs> I guess for me, it's a little bit of both. I mean, I like challenges. Um, I guess for me, in my mind, I don't like to be normal. I don't like the norm because a lot of time, the norm is what's accept, you know, accepted. It's 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 what everybody does. So, oh, you're normal because you're doing what everybody else does. And I think all of us um, has it in us to find that one thing that we love, one thing we drive, one thing that makes you feel special, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be anything, you know, super tough. It could be you doing crochet. It could be whatever it is that gives you that peace, that, that makes you feel special, that's like, my one thing, I, I think it's always been that, been that for me. I like challenges. So I, I tend to pick things that will challenge me out of my comfort zone, challenge me out of the norm. It's like, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. People are like, why do you want to run a marathon? Like, um, it's just not the norm. Uh, every time I read about it, like only less than 1% of the world population has done a marathon. So things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I love things like that. It's, it, I feel like I'm doing things that just sets me apart, not because I'm comparing or competing, but it's just something I want to do for me. That's good. I mean, this seems like such a great challenge. You're not, this is not your career. This is a hobby or a pastime that you do. Like you just said, finding that one thing for you. How did you get into marathon running? What type of fulfillment do you get? And walk us through being out there. So 
So a lot of the running, I mean, I'll kind of go back and tell you how it got started for me, but I compare the the running that I do with, with my walk with the Lord. I mean, even when you in a race, it's kind of the same thing. You have the ups and downs, yes. you want to quit. It gets hard, but you know, if you keep pushing, there's that finish line and then you'll have yes. your prize, your medal. But just to kind of go back um, to talk about how it started for me. Um, so in my marriage, Kevin and I, we have this thing because we, we used to um, run together, but running for me was like my me, my me time. A lot of time it was me walking really, kind of my mind is quiet. I can really think through what's going on with me, what's happening ne- next week. Um, it's kind of like a, it was a good way for me to summarize my week and kind of what's coming coming up next week. Mm. And then, you know, it went from walking to running. First, it was a few miles. Um, so I did a few 5Ks and 10Ks with my husband. And then I wanted to keep going. So we went from 10Ks to half marathons. And I don't know, it's something about me where I just like to push myself. And from half marathons, I did a few half marathons because once you do something over and over, it gets easy. You really start to question myself, yourself. Can you do more? Can you push harder? Mm-hmm. And that's that's uh, where marathons came about. And then I, you know, I did one, and I'm pretty sure, like every runner, you while you're out there running, you're thinking, "What am I doing? Why did I sign up for this?" But again, I, I compare it to. Uh, my walk with the Lord, you have high and lows, you have times where you feel like I am God's favorite child, like he is right there every second, everything is going as planned, I mean, he's doing everything he said he's doing, he was going to do in my life, and then you have parts where in the race, you, things start to hurt, you like, you everything in you wants to stop and quit, just again, like, Serving God, everything in you is like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. What's going on? Nothing is going well. You want to quit. But just to knowing that, even if I slow down, as long as I keep going, I will eventually, no matter how long it takes, I will eventually cross that finish line. Same thing again with, with God. Uh, as long as you keep going, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't turn your back on him. You will reach whatever point it is you're trying to reach, whether it's a relationship, whether it's something you're trying to manifest in your life, uh, you will get there if you don't quit. Yes, that's really good. I mean, that's how our life is built as believers. We were all designed to run a race and to run it in your own lane within your own strength, you know, with the strength of God behind you, but not looking over at the next uh, competitor, you know, but to stay focused in your lane. It, it talks about comparing the the runner who runs within this natural space or like in this life that we're in now, and then how it will be compared to running for eternity, you know, eternally, you know, reaping those rewards. And so it sounds like that's where your mindset is. Like you said, you're, you're thinking about this, your walk as you're doing it. And that's what motivates you to keep going. So that's really good. And so how many races have you ran so far? How many of those, I guess, I know it's been a lot, but I guess I should say, how many of those are actually full marathon races? Seven. Seven official marathons and then two unofficial because one was a training marathon and the other one was an ultra, which is beyond a marathon, but seven (laughs) official marathons. Seven. And define for us again, how many miles is a marathon? 26.2 miles. (laughs) way (laughs) that is discipline in your mind I mean itself just to think about running for that amount of time and distance I yeah I can't even get past that (laughs) so I, I love this um talking about this this thing that you do I also see how discipline spills over into other areas of your life I mean you are you are amazingly beautiful. Your body is just so toned and fit and ready to go. I mean, I'm like, do I need to get out here and run marathons too? Like, what do I need to do to look like Renee? You know, a lot of women that we know together, 
that we share mutual relationships with, they're like, yeah, Renee is on a whole nother level. It's like, I, we don't even try to get to Renee's status. I mean, because your level of discipline is so high. I don't know if we, have, if we could ever catch up. <laughs> so um, I want to talk a little bit how this spills over into other areas of your life. Tell me how you carry this torch of discipline within your career. Um, for me, I guess I would say that started because in life, when you look at your career, sometime early on, it's really hard to figure out what you want to do career wise and how that's going to line up with the type of life. I think that's one thing we don't talk enough about. So we talk about career, career, you know, you, you, you hear all about the top, the doctors, the lawyers kind of career. But a lot of time we don't line up the type of life we want to have because the career will impact that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So the first half of my career, I did a lot of traveling for work, which in turn allowed me to travel personally a lot because a lot of these work trip will turn into um, extended personal trip. Mm -hmm. So I traveled a lot with my husband. So one thing that did was show us different views, different things about life that you normally wouldn't think about if you're not outside of your current environment. Because mm-hmm. we used to what we do every day, what we see and hear every day. But when once you're put into a different environment, you see how people live and think differently. It just gives you an opportunity to think about different things. Yes. So, I mean, at the beginning of my career, it was it was the same like everybody else. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to get a job. You know, you're going to work hard. You're going to get promoted. And then... That's it. You got, you know, mm-hmm. go up the ladder, get promoted. That's that's your career. That's what you that's what you do. So at some point, and I don't know how many years into my career that changed, where my focus wasn't necessarily going up the ladder or or getting promotions and you know, sticking to the one career, but it was more so how can I make myself valuable to my employer to where I get to call some of the shots because, mm. you know, in most cases, the employers call the shots. It's like, uh, because in their mind, when they think you are uh, replaceable, then yeah, they do get to call a lot of shots as far as scheduling and pay and increase and all of that. So that was really my, uh, my goal, I guess, midway through my career was, okay, how can I make myself valuable to where it's hard to say, oh, Renee's, Renee's got to go, or we're going to replace Renee, yeah. which is kind of what I did. So, I mean, one of my strategy was for whatever job I had was to learn as much as I could. So that, that meant a lot of reading, a lot of researching and kind of on my own time so that it doesn't take 10 years later to where I'm fully like senior and know everything, but it's more like six months. Mm. I know everything. And it's like every department, I know what my job is. I know what everybody else's job is. I know what the other department's kind of being an asset, not necessarily promotion, doing exactly what they want me to do, going over the top, but increasing my knowledge to where I was an asset. Mm. Um, So I did a lot of years of consulting. and, And of course, consulting can go two ways. It could be the you know, a lot of traveling that they, they tell you what the hourly rate is and that's what it is. It's a six month contract. And when that's done, you have to look for something else. Uh, that probably only lasted maybe the first year of my career. Um, after that, I've most of the time been in a position to where I was able to participate in the decisions for my career. Um, as far as, okay, if you want me to stay on board for a particular project, this is the rate that I would like. The other part that helped also is financially being in a position where you can make the call without fear. Because the other side of that is they could say no to what it is that you want, being prepared for that. So if you're in a financial situation that allows that if I do get a no, it's okay. The world is not going to fall apart. Um, We'll be fine, you know. So that that also played a factor was uh, being financially stable to where I could, without fear, say what it is that I wanted. And whether I get a yes or a no, 
be okay with it. Um, so I, I think that help and I mean, for, for years now, that's pretty much how my contracts have been. Uh, they will normally ask me, how long do you want the contract to be for versus, oh, it's three or six months. So they'll ask me a lot of things um, about my contract, about the hours. So I'll, I'll say, uh, yeah, no weekends or these are the days I could do. Or if, if they want to do meetings, I will say, yep, I can't do it after that time, which to kind of follow the pathway, the next part of that is obviously that gives me a lot of freedom to um, spend time with my family. So the kids, if they have things at school, I can block my calendar and say I'm not available. Uh, if I need to go to their school to attend something, I can do that and not be stressed where, you know, it's a nine to five or I got to go in the office. I got to do that. And I have to bring God into, into this as well, because he seemed to bring the opportunities because sometimes we don't see mm, it mm. bring the opportunities that lines up with that yes um to where it's not i'm not working with clients where they are strict on time or we only need you for you have to be available this time i normally can come in and say the i can't do those hours and they're normally fine with it mm. it's not like strict where oh if you can't do that then we're not gonna hire you so to tighten um, tied in all together. So you they have to kind of balance out, am I a big enough of an asset to where they can work with my demands? So a lot of time, you know, we, we meet halfway, but a lot of time, do they want my skill set or do they want to take a chance on somebody else that they may not get all the skill set they want? That is so good. I mean, that's domination in the career force, you said a lot there that provided so much value as you're talking about value and asset. We don't think about that. We do think about, you know, getting into these careers and pretty much just doing what we've been told to do uh, while well, I'm performing well at the job, you know, and punching out, you know, and that's it. But y your brain is just designed to really dig deep into the hidden wisdom or treasure there that has really set you up for success. So making yourself an asset, I mean, that's huge. That is really huge. You know, coming into the company and like you said, just cutting the time short, you know, by making yourself, you know, higher, you know, in your skill set. And in your performance, you know, right out the bat. I mean, that is so well. I, I'm taking notes. That I want to adopt. I just started a new job myself, and which you helped me to get to, you know, uh, and, and, and I, I want to take that as well. And then, like you said, you know, not leaving God out of it. You know, like you said, he just seems to orchestrate you getting into the right positions. Is that due to you um, inquiring of him in your prayer time about it? Like taking your career to him? Tell us more about that when you say, you know, putting God in it, allowing him to kind of shape your career for you. Uh, like for me, when I, when I pray to God, I don't necessarily say, this is the type of job. This is the type of, I'm more so whatever it is, you, you know, what's in my heart, you know, the family, kind of the family um, environment we have, the freedom we love in our time and not being tied up you know, nine to five, going to the office and then we don't get back home and, you know, it's mm -hmm. dinner. And so my prayer is normally that he'll bring the right job, the right company my way. So even when, I mean, I, there has been a few times where I've looked for opportunities and I, I could tell you there are so many opportunities where I, I felt like, man, I really want that job. It was perfect. And it falls through not because of anything, you know, normally a lot of the fall throughs is, oh, we're going to put it on hold. We will do it in a few months, top, you know, and with that pause, then I normally get exactly what I need. Mm. And then you always look back. It's like, man, if I would have, because it's easy when you already have a job to turn down something mm -hmm. else that comes up or you don't even look, you don't even investigate. But that, that has happened, which, again, which leads me to believe that he does bring the correct opportunity my way uh, and blocking out uh, the ones that will not serve me well, you know, and um, whenever I have to do a search for a new opportunity. That's powerful. And that's where 
I want to be, you know, where I want to encourage the listeners to be. If you're not, you know, content with your career and just not knowing what to do, you know, as Renee just said, you know, taking it to God, mapping out what your life is like and asking him to help find the right job for you. That's really good. I also love what you said about calling the shots because you just, you never think about that within a career or maybe, maybe some do, you know, but you just, you feel like it's just this cycle. You clock in nine to five, you do what you're told, but you have created this place where you call the shots, where you are in demand. Like if Renee's not here, this place is not functioning, you know, and that's such a great way to elevate your mind when you're considering your career and being disciplined early on to study those processes, those SOPs, those training guides, those that role that you've been put in so that you can put yourself in a place where you could call the shots. Yeah. And just one, I wanted to add one thing. Um, another word to me that goes with discipline is character. Mm. So to me, it was, it's not just being an asset and having the skill set. It's um, also knowing my clients know when they say, go to Renee, she's going to do it. They don't need an answer for me. They know I'm going to do it. So mm -hmm. it's the character of you always show up when you say you're going to show up. You always do what you say you're going to do. And sometime uh, it might take two, three hours to research to do what it is you need to do correctly. Not cutting corners and just doing it just to do it. To me, that's the difference between a job and a career where you actually enjoy what you do and you do it as if you're doing it unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just throw something together just to, you know, just to tie it and, and, and uh, have something to, to present, but you want to do it well. You want to do it the best way it should be done or it can be done. Um, so I think that also is having the character to do well on your own without having a manager over you. Cause a lot of time, um, I know it's hard for people to be independent in that way, but there's a lot of, that's, that's how you gain your freedom. Being able to manage your own schedule, manage what needs to be done, do it, doing it well without having a manager or somebody over your head to tell you, mm. I need this tomorrow. It needs to be done. So if you're working on a project, you know that it's going to take me two weeks. Don't, don't lag on it. And two months later, you're finally getting it done. You know, this is only taking two weeks. Get it done in two weeks without mm. anybody having to tell you. So these are the stuff like that. So to me, it's the discipline and the character to do the right thing without having a manager over you to push you to do the right thing. That's when how you will gain your freedom because they trust you. They know, they say they're going to do it. They're going to do it. So I don't need them to log into the computer and show me their online from nine to five. I know they're going to do what mm -hmm. they say they're going to do. Yes. And good character carries you a long way. I mean, the word talks about that, about a good name is better than riches. It is riches, you know. And so when you hear the name Renee within the healthcare IT industry, you know, as a consultant going these different places, people, when they hear that, they can hear a woman of character, a woman of great discipline, you know, a woman that's a, a game changer, a, a, a shaker, you know, a mover. and that's very rewarding. And so it makes the ideal of discipline actually fun or free, as you said. Yeah. So would you say in your life that you have missed out on just doing things just any old kind of way? Or you really believe that discipline has just brought you great fruit and reward? Um, I think it has definitely giving me a lot of great and positive results. Just to kind of balance it out, I will say also, so you can be disciplined so much that you don't get to enjoy your results. Mm. So, and me being disciplined, for example, if I run a race and you put in the training, I will take a few weeks off and enjoy the result, but it's not being disciplined 24 seven. So you have to give yourself some time to enjoy what it is you've worked hard for. Yeah. Example might be taking a vacation. You've worked hard for the past three months. It's okay to just relax, 
turn off the computer or put the phone away and take a break and reset um, so that you're ready for the next uh, page or the next challenge that you want to you wanna take on. So yeah, so I, I definitely enjoy the result, but um, again, taking time to really enjoy the result helps. It's not going, 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 going. You do need that downtime to enjoy um, the hard work that you've been putting in. What advice would you like to give to the listeners about who needs to start a life of discipline? One thing I would say with, um, even in our, when I run with other runners, one thing we always say to each other is run your race. So it's, it's easy to say, oh, I want to drop 10 size, you know, down like this person did it. Or I want to save this amount of money. I want to, so you really want to look at yourself and not look at other people. You need to look at yourself and say, what is it that you want? Or what would it take for me to get over this barrier or this challenge? It could be weight loss. It could be discipline and getting up early. It could be watching what you eat. It could be, I want to travel more, whatever it is. So if you look at yourself, not what everybody else is doing, what is it that I can do in moderation? Because we tend to just want to snap our fingers and have it happen mm-hmm. in three months. Yeah. Or... yeah. So for example, and I can use an example. If you say by summer, I want to travel to a place, you pick a place. So then you need to ask yourself, what is it going to take for me to make that happen in six months? Is it saving the money? Is it taking time off from work ahead of time? Is it planning the trip out or whatever it's going to take for you to achieve that? You you start working on that. And when you look at six months, it doesn't mean you're just going to go and buy tickets and do all of that right away. It's a little bit. Maybe you need to save some money. You know, so you need to decide, okay, how much do I need to put away every month to reach that goal? So I think that's kind of um, what I would say is set your goal based on what it is you can do. Um, And I can use a similar example for working out. Somebody else might be able to work out an hour and a half a day, but you only have 15 minutes. Set your goals around the 15 minutes you have. It could be five minutes. That's better than nothing. So a lot of time we think, oh, if I don't have an hour and a half, why I might as well just not do it. Because I think the the hour and a half is what I need to do to get to the result. It's almost like the the one day and day one I mentioned earlier. Yeah. If you keep saying one day, one day I'm going to have an hour and a half to work out, or one day I'll be able to travel, it never comes. Just make today the first day you start planning towards whatever it is you want you want to achieve. And, and remember, anything, something is better than nothing. Yes, yes. Well, I am a living witness to this woman's words. I mean, just two months ago, I was on a health challenge myself to lose weight and to really get myself back into the shape that I needed to be. And just her words would echo in my ear. She was like my accountability partner in person and in my spirit to encourage me to do it. And I did it. And It was in half the time, you know, we're talking about 15, 20 pounds I needed to lose. Just listening to her advice and building my own goals and plans and not waiting till tomorrow, but starting today. It was like in the middle of the month. My birthday was right around the corner. Thanksgiving was right around the corner. I said, you know what? I'm not waiting another day or waiting after this moment or this celebration or this holiday. I'm starting today. And I am happy to see the fruit of my discipline by following the words of this woman here. So I want to thank you so much, Renee, for your time. Tell the people, where can they find you and follow you and just see your life of liberty through your discipline from the races that you share on social media to your lovely family and excursions that you all go on together? Uh, I am uh, mostly on Facebook. And I'm not sure if they can follow me because I'm not on Instagram. Um, but yeah, if if you look up my name, Renee Clark, um, on, in Kennesaw, Georgia, on Facebook, you will see my profile there. And yeah, I do post probably mostly most of my races are uh, posted there. 
Um, and in some of the trips that we do, um, I will post um, on that page. Awesome. Well, I encourage you all to follow Renee Clark on Facebook, and we'll put that link that in the show notes for you. Get encouraged, get elevated and enriched by this powerful woman. Is there anything else you want to share with the audience today, Renee? Yeah, the, the one last thing I would say, every day you wake up could be that day one. It doesn't have to be January 1st. It doesn't have to be June, July. Every day could be your day one. You just have to make that decision. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Your Voice Must Be Heard podcast. I hope the story you heard inspired and motivated you to take action for transformation in some aspect of your life. I would love it if you send an email with questions, share your enlightening moment or profound wisdom you may have. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Your Voice Must Be Heard podcast. I look forward to hearing from you. See you in the next episode. Bye.